بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وبعد كم نير بليز يس اوكي اوكي جزاك الله So tonight inshallah we will speak on the tafsir of surah al-falaq So uh, as we have uh, come to know alhamdulillah that Surat Al-Falaq and Surat Al-Nas are both called Al-Mu'awwidhatayn that through which we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from different evils. And actually Surat Al-Falaq and Surat Al-Nas were revealed together. And that's why they are given one name together, Al-Mu'awwidhatayn. And that's why they both start with Qul A'udhu. قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ and قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقِ In Surat Al-Falaq, uh, we will come to know, or Surat Al-Falaq generally, highlights the concept that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the refuge for all, you know, uh, human beings, and is the resort that all human beings should return to at all times. To protect them from all evils and to give them remedy and recovery if they have a disease or something like this. And the surah starts with A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajim, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, Qul A'udhu Bi Rabbi Al Falaq. Say, O Muhammad, I seek refuge in the Lord of the day break. So this surah was revealed to teach the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam some words to say and also to, te to teach all Muslims some words to say to seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from different evils. As we have mentioned, Surah An-Nas was revealed to teach us how to say or what to say to seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the, the shaitan. And Surat Al-Falaq, of course, because of the, uh, the great uh, danger of the shaitan, there is one full surah, which is Surat Al-Nas, telling us how to seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the shaitan, whether the shaitan of jinn or the shaitan from the human beings. And this shows us to what extent is the danger of the shaitan. Because Surat Al-Falaq, it teaches us how to seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from all other evils. So one surah to seek refuge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the shaitan and another surah, surah al-falaq to seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from all other evils. So and that's why shaitan is one of the main uh, evils you know that we have to do our best to be protected from inshallah and that's very easy by seeking refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from him and by obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not allowing the shaitan and not giving him the chance to to deviate us and and you know to to think that we are weak so that you know whisper again and again to us we have to block the way in front of him from the very beginning and if we did obey him uh, one time or or whatever times or many times in the past, then we have to correct ourselves and make tawbah. Okay, now let's go back to Surah Al-Falaq. First verse, قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقُ Say, O Muhammad, I seek refuge in the Lord of the day break. And the word Al-Falaq literally means the splitting. And the, the morning, As-Subh, is called al-falaq because when it comes it splits the darkness of the night as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah al-an'am al isbah the splitter of the day break so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who splits you know the night and brings the 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 day time or brings morning and light so the first verse is drawing our attention to the greatness and mightiness and omnipotence 
of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are going to seek refuge in. Because dangers in this world are so many. Evils in this world are so many. So if we do not remember all the time the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the huge power and unique power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we will be scared and frightened all the time. We will not be able to face all these evils. But from the very beginning, the surah is drawing our attentions. You are seeking refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of the day break, who uh, uh, runs the affairs of this universe and looks after this universe. And every day there is a night and there is a day break. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, who runs the affairs of this universe in this perfect manner, is able for sure to protect you from all evils if you seek refuge in him from these evils. So the, the surah didn't say, قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ for example, because the purpose here is to draw our attention to who is Allah is the Lord of the daybreak. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who gives, you know, night and day the command continuously, every day and night, you know, to, to start at a certain point of time and end at a certain point of time and ends the sun to rise and then to set um, in the, you know, sunset time, and they all obey him subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's very easy for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from all evils, whatever these evils are. And regardless of how these evils are big, you know, or, or, or dangerous or whatever. But we have to remember this. When we recite the surah, we have to remember this. Because sometimes the problem is that Sometimes some people, they read the dua or they read the surah, but they do not remember in their hearts or they do not have in their hearts, you know, the full understanding and in their minds, the full understanding, you know, of the words or the verses that they read. You know, Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu anhu used to say, إِنِّي لَا أَحْمِلُ هَمَّ الدُّعَاء وَلَكِنِّي أَحْمِلُ هَمَّ إِنِّي لَا أَحْمِلُ هَمَّ الْإِجَابَةِ وَلَكِنِّي أَحْمِلُ هَمَّ الدُّعَاءِ فَإِذَا كَانَ الدُّعَاءُ كَانَتِ الْإِجَابَةُ مَعَهُ Like, uh, you know, I do not uh, worry about, you know, the issue that Allah is going to respond to the, to the dua. Because Allah says in the Quran, أُدْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ Call upon me, invoke me, supplicate me, and... I am going, going definitely to respond to your dua. So Sayyidina Umar al-Khattab used to say, I am not worried about the, Allah's response to the dua, but I am worried about to the dua itself, that I say it properly in the perfect manner, so that, uh, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds to it. So that's why, you know, if you say any dua and you find no response from Allah. Don't doubt the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, we don't doubt the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But doubt yourself because we are all human beings. I have to doubt myself. Maybe I didn't say the dua with the due khushu'a, humbleness, or full understanding of the meanings of the words, or perfect belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the real protector and so on. And of course, so long as, or so far as this point is concerned, you know, you may say a dua in the, in the most perfect manner, and you are not given response of this dua in this world. Because in one hadith, the Prophet ﷺ has said that there are three ways of uh, giving response uh, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the dua. One way of them is that we are, we are all aware of is that you make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you recovery. For example, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recover all um, you know, the, who's, who are suffering from any 
diseases, uh, Amin, all Muslims all over the world, Amin. So you may ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for example, to give you some money. So this is your direct desire. And you say the dua in the perfect manner with the khushu' and you know, uh, you know Allah and his uh, power and everything in your mind and heart while you are doing the dua and you rely on Allah and you trust Allah and everything. But one way of giving, responding to your dua is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you the money that you have asked it for. But there are two other ways through which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may also respond to your dua. One of them is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may delay the response of this dua until the day of judgment. So that on the day of judgment, day of resurrection, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you what you have asked for and more, much more than it. Because things which we are given in this world are totally different from things that dwellers of paradise will be given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah knows, for example, that if, if this person is given that money, the money will not be good for him. Maybe it will deviate him or deviate his children, you know. Or if he gets a car, maybe he, he may make an accident and, you know, has a very you know bad problems with his body and health and, and so on so allah does not give you the money or the car and but give you um, much and much you know rewards and good things more than what you have asked in this dunya give them to you in the hereafter so this is another way of responding to the dua a third way is that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala drives away from you something bad and evil that was about to hit you or afflict you. For example, you make dua that Allah may give you, for example, 100,000 pounds. And through, uh, not from the sky like this, but through, through you know, your work, through something, of course. Uh, but then Allah does not give you this chance, you know, to get the money and to do this deal or transaction or whatever so you don't get the money but uh, still Allah has already responded to your dua in another way that um, you know you were about to be afflicted with something very bad like you know uh, a big stealing theft that one's home you know w was about to be stolen and things more than one thousand or one hundred thousand pounds were about to be taken from him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saves him from this and at the same time does not give him, uh, you know, money uh, in the same manner that he asked for. But he saves him from losing the same amount of money. Anyway, قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقِ You know, we have to seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we do that, you know, we should understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who is able to do everything and that whatever my problem, uh, regardless of uh, how big is it, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allahu Akbar, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the greatest. And we do, do say this, you know, in every movement in, inside the salah. So Allahu Akbar, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who is controlling huge creatures the sun, the moon, the heavens, the earth. So he is able, of course, to protect us against all evils. Min sharri ma khalaq. From the evil of whatever he has created. And Allah has created everything. So this is a very general uh, dua. That you seek refuge in Allah from the evils of whatever he subhanahu wa ta'ala has created because you know different things you know can uh, have some evil you know different things can have some evil you know uh, for example if you have money again this money can be a source of 
you know, can be a source of blessing for you and can be a source of, you know, evil. Uh, even one's, you know, one's wife or children, they can be good for him and they can be bad for him. So you are seeking refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the evils of everything that Allah, he has created. So like people, you know, uh, your classmates, for example, or your uh, colleagues at, at work, for example, you know, they may be good to you, they may be bad to you as well. So you seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the evils of whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created, from every evil and all sources of evil in, in this world. And the verse says, min sharri ma khalaq, from the evils of what he has created. And again, this draws our attention to the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator, and because he is the creator, he is the most knowledgeable, knowledgeable one of his creatures. And he is the most knowledgeable one of the evils that may, uh, you know, be, uh, come, that may come from, you know, his different creatures. So again, when we read this verse, you know, we... Uh, remember this meaning as well that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator and now I am seeking refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who controls the affairs of the whole universe who controls the daybreak and the night who controls all these huge creatures and who is the creator who knows the best about his creatures so he knows you know the best about the evils you know, of, 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 of these creatures, and he is the best one to defend me and to protect me against all these evils. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator for, for, for everything, is the owner of everything, is the one who runs the affairs of everything as well. Because if someone is planning, like remember what has happened to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, in the story of his hijrah, all different tribes, they were against the Prophet Sallallahu You know, they gathered a very strong young man from every tribe of them. And they all stood just in front of the door of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu everyone uh, holding his sword in his hand. And they were ready just to enter the home of the Prophet Sallallahu and to kill him. But Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, because he is the one who has created them all, and he is the only one, he knows what is inside them all, you know. A human being was not able to defend the Prophet Muhammad in this situation. But Allah, because a human being do not, does not know what is inside the hearts of people and how they plan against, uh, you know, uh, the Prophet or against, you know, uh, whoever else, you know. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows very well. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told his messenger sallallahu sallam to go out from his home and they were in front of his home and they didn't see the prophet muhammad sallallahu sallam and they kept waiting outside the prophet's home uh, thinking that sayyidina ali ibn abi talib who slept at the bed of the prophet muhammad sallam that he they thought he was the prophet sallallahu sallam and they kept waiting and waiting and then when they entered the home, because Sayyidina Ali didn't go out, you know, they discovered that this was Ali ibn Abi Talib and he was not the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So who told the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu about these plans? Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Who protected the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Who, you know, made the disbelievers uh, blind? They didn't see the Prophet, you know, when he went out his home in front of them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator and he subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best one, you know, and the only one that can give us protection. And of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one who can change people's intentions as well. Because if somebody... Uh, is willing to do something bad against you and then you make dua you know without 
doing any 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 other thing allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very simply can change you know that's man's mind so that instead of you know planning against you you know he he stops and he tells himself oh no i'm not going to do it May, for for one reason or another maybe allah puts in his heart fear he says oh no i uh, i'm afraid if i do so and so i you know a big problem will happen to me or allah may put in his heart love to you that he tells himself no he's a good person i'm not going to harm him or allah may make him busy of something else he feels uh, uh, he falls uh, sick for example or one of his family members you know uh, has a problem or needs him with anything so he he does not go and do this trouble against you so and only allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who you know does all these things and you know and plans for all people you know and he can change people's hearts and minds and that's why the prophet sallam used to say allahumma ya muqallib al qulub thabbit qalbi ala deenik oh allah who you know causes hearts to change from one state to another keep my heart firm on your true religion and also the prophet sallam used alaykum salam alaykum salam the Prophet also used to say that hearts are between two fingers of uh, Ar-Rahman's finger that he subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, uh, change them, you know, uh, in, in the manner that he likes, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator, of course we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator, but I mean, when we uh, remember, you know, this meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who can, you know, uh, who knows about all his creatures very well and who knows what is inside their hearts and minds and who can very easily and simply, you know, cause them to change their plans or cause their wicked plans to fail, then inshallah we will make more and more isti'adha uh, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the evils uh, of whatever he has created subhanahu wa ta'ala okay so a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim qul a'udhu bi rabbi al-falaq min sharri ma khalaq this is very general then after making or teaching us and teaching the prophet muhammad sallam this very general isti'adha isti'adha seeking refuge in Allah from all evils then the surah is going to teach the prophet sallallahu and all muslims you know to make isti'adha in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from three specific things or from the evils of three specific things why because these things are very dangerous and what are these things they are the night when it overspreads and the uh, the magicians when they do their black magic or evil magic against someone to harm him and you know the evil eye and the envier who harms people by his envy so this surah is calling us to seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala generally min sharri ma khalaq from the evil of whatever he subhanahu wa ta'ala has created and more specifically from the evils of other three things that I have just told you about and the surah now is going to speak about these three things on a separate manner so قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقُ مِنْ شَرِّ مَا خَلَقُ وَمِنْ شَرِّ غَاسِقٍ إِذَا وَقَبْ غَاسِق is, is a lion, the night. And وَقَبْ means when it overspreads. So for, and I seek refuge in Allah from the night when it overspreads. And why? why we have to seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the night when it, it overspreads 
answer is very clear because until now, subhanAllah, and the Holy Quran was revealed one, one thousand and for more than 1,400 1, years ago. And still until now, you know, we at night differs from daytime. You cannot go out, you know, at 12 a.m., for example, and, and you know, and walk in a, an isolated uh, place. Or you cannot let your children or your wife, you know, go out late at night. Though, alhamdulillah, we live in a very civilized country and alhamdulillah there is you know police and there is everything that gives us inshallah by the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala security and safety but this is the nature of the universe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created because obviously when night comes you know people can hide and many evils can be there and you cannot see them because Light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is light of Allah. Light of daytime is light of daytime. You can see everything. But at night, you know, you can, some things are still hidden. Even if, you know, there is some light by electricity, but still, you know, you cannot know or you cannot be sure that you can see everything. Thieves can hide. You know, wicked people, wanton people can hide. You know, uh, even wild animals can hide, uh, you know, uh, scorpions or snakes or very harmful insects also you do not see at night. You cannot sleep at night in a very, you know, dark place outside your home safely because you don't know maybe, you know, some harmful insect or something. So human beings are human beings, you know, even if we... Uh, Alhamdulillah, by the grace of Allah, humanity has attained, you know, uh, great knowledge by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught us so many things. But man can, should always be humble in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he cannot control this universe. And these simple things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells about in the Holy Quran are still, still there. Still we need to seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the evils of night. You know, even the most civilized, you know, countries, you know, crimes that happen at night are more than crimes which hap happen in the daytime. In some countries, people cannot go out after six or seven. So alhamdulillah, here we can. But at some countries, they don't have this safety that we have here, for example. B why? Because this is night time. So always night time, you know, uh, is more dangerous than daytime. And this is, subhanAllah, you know, the, the universe of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best one, of course, who knows about his creatures and the universe is one of his creatures. This Quran is not from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu definitely, because, you know, sometimes the Holy Quran tells us about something which all the time, not sometimes, all the time, the Holy Quran tells us things which are applicable until the day of judgment and time proves that they are still applicable you know now if if some author you know um, has written a book you know like 20 or 30 years ago and you read the book you know today you will notice that many things are not applicable today you know because uh, people um, knew uh, more and more things and now uh, we are more and more advanced so you can benefit from the book that has been written 30 years ago to some extent, but some things in the same book, you will find them not applicable today. Why? Because the author didn't know what will happen after 30 years, only 30 years. So when he wrote this book, you know, he wrote it from the viewpoint of his time. But now this book is not 100% suitable for today. But the Holy Quran is not like this because it is Allah's words. Every single word in it is suitable, was suitable 1,400 years ago and is suitable until now and will remain suitable until the day of judgment. And this is one sign that the Holy Quran is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. So we have to seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the night when it over 
spreads or from the the evil of the night when it over spreads because night is not is not is not evil but you know some evils can happen during the night so we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the uh, evils of the night when it over spreads uh, of course, at the time of the Prophet Muhammad Sallam, this was even more obvious than nowadays. And in, uh, you know, uh, like, you know, people who used to live in tents and so on, this was more, more clear in their minds at, at that time. But still, it is applicable, you know, and will be applicable until the Day of Judgment as well. وَمِنْ شَرِّ النَّفَّاسَاتِ فِي الْعُقَدْ And I seek refuge in Allah from the evil of the blowers in knots. An nafasat is a plural word, plural of an nafasa. And an nafasa is the lady or the woman who blows in something. Blowing, which you know has some little saliva with it. Some little saliva. This is called nafs and nafs with sa you like you know so they blow p -p -p with some little saliva and al-uqad are knots you know knots made by threads for example because this was the way that the magicians uh, especially at that time and until now this is one of their main ways of making black magic uh, you know, they write down like the name of the person that they li like to harm by the permission of Allah. But this is mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah. وَمَا هُمْ بِضَارِّينَ بِهِ مِنْ أَحَدٍ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ They are not going to harm anybody with it, this magic, except through the permission of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing can happen in this universe without the permission of Allah. You know, because there is a difference between something prohibited and something that Allah, you know, uh, allows it to happen, gives it permission to happen. Not permission in the meaning it is lawful, no, it is unlawful. Like, for example, when a thief steals money, this is prohibited. But Allah's will, you know, is to leave these things happen in this world as uh, some sort of ibtila, you know, testing his his slaves because the one who does the mistake or the sin will be punished and the one who is afflicted with the harm this is a test for him if he has sabr then his degree in paradise will raise more and more if he does not have sabr uh, you know and he does not accept the qadr of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then he has failed in the exam he will get sins as well Okay, so وَمِنْ شَرِّ النَّفَّاسَاتِ فِي الْعُقَدِ Yes, they used to maybe take, you know, something from the, the body uh, like nails or some hair, you know, or write down his name on something and then start to make knots with threads on this in a certain way. And this is, you know, one of the ways of making this uh, magic. And that was widespread at the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And an-nafathati, women who blow in the knots. Because uh, at that time, you know, sihr. Of course, sihr is one of as-sab'a al-mubiqat, by the way. Sihr is one of the seven destructive sins. And they start with ash-shirk billah. Then immediately a sihr. So of course, yes, when you mix, because, you know, the first one who introduced sihr to humanity was whom? Was the shaytan. وَاتَّبَعُوا مَا تَتْلُوا الشَّيَاطِينُ عَلَى مُلْكِ سُلَيْمَانُ وَمَا كَفَرَ سُلَيْمَانُ وَلَكِنَّ الشَّيَاطِينَ كَفَرُوا You know, the shayateen used to, you know, to do sihr at the time of Prophet Sulaiman alayhi salam and wicked people, you know, knew about, you know, uh, 
you know, these plans of the shayateen, and they learn it from the shayateen, sihr. So the, the main, the, the first source of sihr is from a shayateen. And this is a big story. Of course, this is not, uh, you know, the time to speak on sihr in details. But, you know, why sihr is one of as sabah al mubiqat Because I am not now speaking about making fun, for example, you know, sometimes, you know, for example, uh, if I hide something in my pocket and I'm just, this is, you know, this is not the black magic. And I tell you, oh, it disappeared. And you know that, you know, there is a trick here. So this is not the black magic, which is prohibited. This is a play, we play, you know. But, you know, black magic, you know, that uh, the very wicked person, he seeks the help of the shaitan to harm a certain person, uh, you know, and when he seeks the help from shaitan, actually he commits very uh, bad sins, you know, so that the shaitan is pleased with him and tells him about how to harm this person or that person. So that's why sihr is very, because the one who's, who does the real black magic, sihr is actually following the way of the shaitan, not the way of ar-Rahman, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, so uh, some uh, scholars have said that Al-Nafasat, the women who used to blow in the knots, and because Sihr at that time was done mostly by women. But some other Mufassirun says no. Al-Nafasat here, uh, this word described souls, souls, like, you know, and soul in Arabic, you know, uh, is 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 muannas is not muzakkar is a feminine not not masculine, so anafasat means souls, uh, whether souls souls that blow in the knots souls of people who may be men and may be women so no problem with this you know anyway the surah uh, you know teaches us that we have to seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa taala from the evil of the magicians. And this is very important. We are not magnifying, you know, things for no reason. For, you know, I mean, we must not be uh, terrified and scared. You know, oh, this is sihr. anything that hits us. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us all safe. But, you know, some people, they uh, exaggerate the matter. You know, if one cannot study well, he says, oh, maybe somebody has done sihr against me. If he cannot work well, oh, this is sihr has, has been done against me. If he cannot uh, have children, for example, and this is the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Quran says, وَيَجْعَلُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ عَقِيمًا That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is his desire, some people will not have children. But sometimes you say, okay, this is from sihr. So everything is from sihr, so they, they cannot live in a, in, a, you know, in a proper manner in this world. So we are not with those people. No, please don't do that. But on the other side, some people deny sihr completely. They say, no, nothing is sihr. This is khurafa. You know, this is nonsense. Sihr, now we have doctors, we have, you know, people have already gone to the moon <laughs> and you are telling me about sihr. Uh, how can science cannot prove sihr, for example? No, sihr is proven because it is in the Holy Quran. But we believe that everything is in the hands of Allah. And even magicians cannot harm anyone but by the permission of Allah. So now we have to be in good contact with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, for example, and yeah, not comparing Allah to anybody, of course, but you know, for exa yani, just, you know, to give an example, you know, uh, if somebody, uh, a company, is responsible for, uh, say, cleaning this, the, you know, this street in, in front of the masjid, for example, you know, and uh, they appoint two gentlemen to do this job, cleaning of this street, and they don't do it very well. So the best thing is to speak to the one who is responsible for that company, you know, because he is well aware of all people who work with him, 
and he can instruct them, give them direct instruction, either to work well or uh, I will change you, for example, or something. So, uh, now, if, yes, there is sihr, but we should not make ourselves uh, very busy or we, with, with, with this issue of sihr, we should make ourselves, you know, very busy with uh, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, uh, to save us from the evil of sihr and protect us from sihr. And we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the evil of the blowers in the knots. And this does not need hours to, to take place, just to read Surah Al-Falaq. And that's it. And when you read it, or when I read it, we have to read it while we are sure and we have faith in the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because many people, they go to sheikhs, oh, sheikh, read Quran for me because I am a weak person now. I am suffering from this and that. No. You have, you know, all these problems because of the weak iman that you have. If you have good iman, strong iman, then you have the Quran, you have Surah Al-Falaq. Just read it and be sure that Allah will protect you. Once you think that you need someone to be like, uh, you know, a mediator between you and Allah, then problem, you know, becomes bigger and bigger and you suffer more and more. But know for sure that remedy is in, uh, in your hand. Very simple and very easy. Allah is accepting your dua whenever you say it. And Allah is protecting you whenever you trust in Him and rely in Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just read Surah Al-Falaq and don't, you know, even, you know, uh, read it for, for hours. No, just read it three times as the Prophet Muhammad has said in the morning and three times at night. Surah Al-Qul Huwa Allah Ahad, Surah Qul A'udhu Bi Rabbi Al-Falaq and Surah Qul A'udhu Bi Rabbi Al-Nas. And this will not take more than maximum five minutes in the morning and five minutes at night and, and forget about, you know, uh, the whole matter. After that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is defending you. So don't be busy, don't uh, doubt, don't have suspicions. Oh, they might be, you know, jinn, might be shaitan, might be sihr, might be khalas. You have already done what you have to do. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now is protecting you. This is not your job. This is not our job. Our job is only to recite the surah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the protector. So don't make things difficult for yourself by asking help from this body or that person or whatever. Okay. And last thing uh, and last verse of the surah is teaching us to seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the evils of the envier when he envies, وَمِن شَرِّ حَاسِدٍ إِذَا حسد. And from the evil of an envier, when he envies. And al-hasid, the envier, is someone who wishes that you lose or you miss a blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or a ni'mah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to you. So he does not, uh, you know, love to see you happy. And this is bad, extremely bad, and this is punished Islamically. Every Muslim must not be an envier. Uh, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, has said, uh, beware of hasad, meaning avoid hasad. فَإِنَّ الْحَسَدَ يَأْكُلُ الْحَسَنَاتِ كَمَا تَأْكُلُ الْمَاءُ النَّارِ For hasad, envy, to to practice envy against somebody, this eats up hasanat as ma, as water extinguishes fire. And the Prophet Muhammad Sallam used to say, La tabagadu wa la tahasadu wa la tadabaru wa kunu ibad Allahi ikhwana. Don't hate one another. Don't envy one another. Don't turn your backs to one another. Like, you know, when you see somebody, okay, whenever I see him, 
I'm not going to say salam to him, just I will pretend that I, I, don't, I, I, I haven't seen him. I will turn my face the other side and that's it. So no, this is prohibited in Islam. وَكُونُوا عِبَادَ اللَّهِ إِخْوَانًا and be all oh, servants of Allah, brothers. Because usually you don't like a problem to happen or to afflict your brother, your blood brother. Because his honor is your honor. If he's happy, you are happy. This is the, the natural feeling of natural good human beings. So the Prophet Muhammad Sallam is telling us that all Muslims should be like this. You know, because if my brother, who is not my blood brother, but he is my brother in Islam, if he has a problem, I feel that I have a problem, so I will not be happy. So how can I envy him? Okay. And the Prophet Muhammad Sallam has said that they do not gather, two things do not gather in the heart of uh, the slave of Allah. Al-Iman wal-Hasad. True belief and true faith in Allah and envy. They cannot come together in one heart of, of a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which means the envier has a weak Iman. He does not have a perfect Iman. Okay. وَمِن شَرِّ حَاسِدٍ إِذَا حسد. Scholars have said that, you know, of course, I seek refuge in Allah from the evil of the envier when he envies. But they said that this verse asks us or teaches us to seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the envier himself and from his envy. وَمِن شَرِّ حَاسِدٍ From the evil of the hasid, the envier. Because they said that the envier, you know, has a, an impure soul. And he likes to harm you through any possible means. So it can be hasad or can be something else. Because he is an envier, he does not like you to be happy. So if he can give you, you know, uh, a harmful eye, he will do. If this does not work, with you, then he will try to harm you by another, through any other means. So that's why وَمِن شَرِّ حَاسِدٍ He is himself. There is an embedded, you know, if I can use this word, embedded, included, evil in his impure soul. This is number one. Number two, his hasad is also very dangerous. So I seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from him and from his hasad as well. And you remember first verse, قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقِ Scholars have said there is a relationship between using the word Rabb al-Falaq, the Lord of the daybreak, and uh, you know, the uh, kinds of evils mentioned in the surah. They said because all kinds of evil, uh, you know, they are you know, like, like darkness, darkness of, of sadness, you know, darkness of, uh, of evil, darkness of misfortune, you know, when one is hit by, uh, by magic, he's suffering, darkness of suffering, when one is hit by hasad, he's suffering, darkness of pain. So they said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is able and who show us every uh, night uh, and day, that he is able to change darkness of the night with the daybreak, قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقِ is also able to change darkness of our problems and to turn it into light of Allah's blessings and graces when we seek refuge in him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it was narrated by Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas radiyallahu anhumah that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to make isti'adha for his two grandsons, Sayyidina Al-Hasan and al Hussein, Because it is not only that you make isti'adha for yourself, you can make it for your children as well, or for anybody else, but for your children mainly and your you know, family members, if any one of them is suffering from anything. So the Prophet Muhammad used to take uh, 
كل سيدنا الحسن آن الحسين إن أباكما كان يعوذ بهما إب إسماعيل وإسحاق Your father Ibrahim used to use these words to seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, for his two sons Ismail and Ishaq. Then the Prophet used to make this istahada and say these words for al Hassan and al Hussein. A'udhu bi kalimati Allah tamma min kulli shaytanin wa hamma wa min kulli aynin lamma. One more time. A'udhu bi kalimati Allah tamma min kulli shaytanin wa hamma wa min kulli aynin lamma. I seek refuge in Allah's perfect words and verses from every shaitan and every hamma like scorpion or snake and from every evil eye. You know, the evil eye. So the Prophet Muhammad Sallam, uh, of course, he conformed to the command of Allah and he started to use Surah Al-Falaq and Surah Al-Nas and he started to use also, you know, uh, some similar du'as like this one and he started to use them for himself and for his household and for his grandchildren and so on. So it's very good that we do this for our children as well. That you call your children and then you, you know, you say this du'a, they may say, Ameen. You know, uh, sometimes the Prophet Muhammad used the word "uawwizuka." Uawwizuka, like I seek refuge in Allah for you. Uawwizuka can also be used, but in this in this narration, it is just "a'udhu." Uawwizuka. The other one is "uawwizuka bi'izzati Allah wa qudratih min sharri ma tajidu wa tuhadir." I seek refuge for you in Allah's glory and power from the evil, uh, from the evils that you are suffering from, and that you, 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 you know, you know, you are afraid of, or that you, you know, uh, yes, that you are, you fear from, or you are afraid of. Okay. You know the so the. It is very bad, you know, to be an envier, as we have mentioned the hadith, that a true believer cannot be an envier. And contrary to this is the good status of the one whose heart is very pure and who does not have any hatred or rancor for any one of the believers. So one day the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asked, O Messenger of Allah, who is the best person of all people? So the Prophet Muhammad answered, So they said, O Messenger of Allah, Lisan, we know, Lisan, one whose tongue is telling only the truth. But what is Mahmumul Qalb? Even they didn't understand. What is Mahmumul Qalb? So the Prophet Muhammad Sallam said, "Huwa al-taqiyu al-naqiyu al-ladhi la isma fihi, wala baghya, wala ghilla, wala hasad." Mahmum al-qalb. Qalb is heart, and mahmum is the qalb which is pure and pious, and which there is no sin in it. Means no intention for sinning, you know deliberation that I'm going to sin, do this and that. Because anyone can sin, but it is not engraved in his heart, you know. So this heart, there is no sin in it and no oppression in it. He does not have any intention to, uh, to oppress people or to, uh, you know, wrong them of anything. And no rancor in it and no envy in it. This is the mahmum qalb. The mahmum al-qalb whose owner is the best one in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mahmumul qalbi, saduqul lisan. And because his heart 
is, is, is pure and his heart is pious and there is no sin and no rancor and no envy and no oppression in his heart, then this is reflected on his tongue. His tongue is also telling the truth all the time. Is it time for Adhan now? Okay, so you may make the Adhan, then we continue, inshallah. Okay, uh, Sheikh Abmaid, could you please turn off the air conditioner, please? Okay, so he's going to make the Adhan? Ah, okay. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, salatu wassalam ala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Insha'Allah now I will conclude uh, this uh, brief explanation of Surah Al-Falaq with uh, mentioning uh, some of the things which uh, take away hasad from us. Of course, the first thing is to seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the envier and from envy. And the main way to do that is to read Surah Al-Falaq. So, to again seek the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to resort to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and read this Surah and all other different forms of isti'adha. The second thing is to keep the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is to be obedient to Allah to have piety and to keep the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because in the hadith, Ihfadillah yahfadhk, that if you keep the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah is going to keep you as well and to defend you and to protect you. Number three is to have tawakkul ala Allah. You know, is to rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to protect you and his uh, you know, he's powerful over all things. Then it's also, and this is very important, which is not to be scared or frightened all the time because somebody may envy you. And scholars have said that this is one of the most important things which take away, you know, hasad from us. Because in the Qudsi hadith, Allah says, Ana inda dhan abdi bi. You know that whatever you think of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah gives it to you. 
So if you read al Mu'awwidatayn and you seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then think well of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say, no, no one will be able to harm me because my protector is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you protection. But if you read all these surahs and then you still, you know, say, oh, I'm not sure whether I'll be protected or not. Oh, so you don't trust Allah. You think this person think, think badly in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah will give him a bad things as well because he thinks badly of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, you know, it is like, for example, when you tell somebody, no, 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 I know that you, you are not able to help me with this. You are a weak person. No, 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 I will not ask you to help me. You can't do it. Then, okay. He says, okay, I will not do it for because, you know, you, 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 you don't ask me in the proper manner because you accuse me that I am weak and I will not be able to do it. Then I'm not going to do it for you. Okay, then uh, also one of the things which take away hasad from us is to replace the suspicions that we may have, suspicions of uh, being mahsud, you know, being suffering from hasad, is to re remove these suspicions in our heart, uh, to replace them with love for Allah, sincerity for Allah, you know, uh, trying to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, reliance on Allah, you know, because when one's heart is empty, it can be filled with many suspicions. But when his heart is busy with mentioning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, loving Allah, trusting Allah, relying on Allah, then these suspicions will find no, no place to reside. So no place for, for suspicions to reside in the heart which is busy with mentioning Allah and, you know, uh, he loves Allah, he, you know, uh, loves to, to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, has tawakkul ala Allah, uh, inaba he, he, ila Allah, he, all, all, always repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so on. And this leads us to the next thing which is repentance. It also takes away hasad from us. Why? Because in the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, وَمَا أَصَابَكُمْ مِن مُصِيبَةٍ فَبِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ وَيَعْفُوا عَنْ كَثِيرٍ And whatever strikes, strikes you of disasters is because of what you have earned, the, the bad deeds that you have, you know, that you have done. وَيَعْفُوا عَنْ كَثِيرٍ And still, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pardons much because if Allah is going to give us a disaster for every sin we commit then no one will be safe in this world but anyway repentance is a good uh, you know thing that protects us against envy because this envy if it strikes us maybe uh, it, 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 it does so because of a sin that uh, uh, the person is committing so when we he repents, inshallah, this hasad will go away from him. Next is a sadaqa, is to pay, to give sadaqat as much as you can. And, you know, uh, pious people have tried sadaqa. You know, it is, it, is, it is tried very well. And they found that it really takes away hasad. This is one thing. And the other thing is that uh, the hasid, the envier, he likes to let one of the ni'mah that Allah has given to you to go away from you. And shukr and ni'mah yahfaduha. To be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his graces, this is a reason for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep these graces for you and even to increase them for you. So how to make shukr for a ni'mah? For example, one's health is good. How to give shukr for this? By worshipping Allah more and more. Because if one is very fit, he has to tell himself, I am very fit. I can go and work 10 hours a day. I can go and play with my children or do whatever. So I have to give some part of this health to 
worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to stand in prayer, even not only the obligatory ones, but like tahajjud, like qiyamu layl, like nawafil. So when you do so, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps the ni'mah that you have, keeps your health and gives you more health. And when you have money and you have to be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by giving charity. And when you give it charity, then Allah, uh, you know, rewards you by protecting you from uh, losing this ni'mah and protecting you from the envier as well. And the last thing scholars have said that it is difficult for many people. Uh, this was Imam Ibn al-Qayyim, the one who has mentioned all these things that protect us from hasad. He said that it is, this last thing is very difficult for many people, but it is very important and very uh, effective in removing away hasad from you. Is that if you know the envier who has envied you and harmed you by his envy, then go to him and <laughs> no, and do ihsan to him. Yes, do ihsan to him, you know. Be good to him, you know, do him a favor. When, when you do so, you know, you know, because when you do so, the hatred and the rancor in his heart against you will gradually go away as well. Because usually, we, you know, people, they love those who are very good to them. So, and this is human nature. So, you will spoil the power of his envy. He will not be able to give you any, envy, any more envy because you will spoil his inner uh, this not spoiling, this is you reform them. But, you know, I mean, you spoil the, the evil in him. You spoil the envy in him. Now the envy, his envy will not be working with you because this, this will not be strong enough to harm you because now mm, he is, is telling himself, oh, but, but this is a good person. Yes, I wish if he, uh, you know, misses this ni'mah, oh, but he's a good person. He has done me this and that favor. Oh. So, so this will spoil the envy in him towards you. He may give envy to, to some other people, but to you, it will not powerful because now, you know, he, he starts to love you. You know, he knows that you have done him a, fa a favor or many favors. And <coughs> yes, yes, of course, yes, yes. Generally, you know, to suppress your uh, anger and to forgive people, is one sign of sign of al muhsinin you know the good doer that allah wallahu yuhibbul muhsinin that allah loves of course yes uh, but you know this is general verse but you know you have to do this specifically as well with the hasid the envier and you know uh, the scholars have said that and the more if he gives you more envy if it happens because he may not change quickly because some people are very wicked people. So even if you do them a favor, still he's, he's against you and he does not like you to be happy. But scholars have said, so what to do is to do more good to him. <laughs> they said the, the, the solution for this is to do more and more good things to him until this starts to work. And, and, but it will work, inshallah, definitely. And the proof for this that Imam Ibn al-Qayyim quoted from the Quran is the verse in Surah Fussilat. وَلَا تَسْتَوِي الْحَسَنَةُ وَلَا السَّيِّئَةُ إِدْفَعْ بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنُ فَإِذَا الَّذِي بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَهُ عَدَاوَةٌ كَأَنَّهُ وَلِيٌّ حَمِيمٌ And, alaykum wa barakatuh, and a good deed cannot be equal to a bad one. So repel the bad one with a good, a good one. Like if somebody, you know, does against you something bad, repel it, not by, by something bad, but by something good. فَإِذَا الَّذِي بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَهُ عَدَاوَةٌ كَأَنَّهُ وَلِيٌّ حَمِيمٌ So, suddenly, the person between you and him was an enmity, like the envier. He feels that you are his enemy, and that's why he likes to envy you. 
كأنه ولي حميم. He will be like an intimate and very close friend to you. But then, following verse is وما يلقاها إلا الذين صبروا وما يلقاها إلا ذو حظ عظيم. But this degree that you will that that someone is able to repel the bad deed with a good one is only given to people of sabr and people of good, uh, you know, degree of iman as well. Yes. 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 You are right. Yes, you are right, and that's why when you say "Wamin Sharri Hasidin Ida Hasad," this is very general as well, because a mother can envy her daughter, and a father can envy his son unintentionally. Because there, yes, there are different kinds of envy. You know, it's mainly when you see something that you admire so much. I don't say, "Ma sha Allah la quwwata illa billah." So, jazak Allah khairan, because you have reminded me of this, that you know, one of the things that we have to do, even with regard to our children. Of course, no one of us like to or likes to harm his children, but. Sometimes, you know, if you see something and you admire it so much, and you don't say "Ma sha Allah, la quwwata illa billah," envy takes place as well. Though you didn't mean to cause him to lose this ni'mah, but envy takes place as well. Why? Because you admire something so much and you didn't thank Allah Subhanahu wa Taala for it. So Allah may take it away. Anyway, you know, just please remember to say, "Ma sha Allah, la quwwata illa billah." When you and you can do this as well, if one of your friends, for example, come to visit comes to visit you, for example, and he is a good person, but for example, you have bought something in you, or you have a newly born child, for example, may Allah give you all. Children, inshallah, more and more, inshallah. <laughs> so, uh, so if he comes to, to visit you and he comes to see this child for the first time, or something very precious that you have bought and is at your home, you know, he may forget to say, "Ma sha Allah la quwwata illa billah." So you can very nicely, not directly, you know, when he tells you, "Oh, this." Very wonderful! Oh, it's very great! Oh, how could you get this? It is uncomparable. Then you say, "Yes, Alhamdulillah, Masha Allah, la quwwata illa billah." You say this, so he will remember. If he is a good person, he will remember and he will say it. And when he when he says it, Insha Allah, no hasad will take place. So it's very important. Jazak Allah khairan. Yes, that unintentionally hasad can take place, and the protection for it. Is to say, "Ma sha Allah, la quwwata illa billah." At the moment when you admire strongly, or somebody else when he admires strongly something, you know, you have both of you, and you may remind him, you know, say in front of him, "Ma sha Allah, la quwwata illa billah." So he will start to say, and then no hasad will take place, insha Allah. And again, if we recite Surah Al Falaq. Surah An-Nas and Surah Al-Ikhlas, as the Sunnah is in the Azkar of the morning and the evening, then Insha Allah, nothing will happen. Insha Allah, nothing bad will happen. Insha Allah. Wa jazakum Allah khairan. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Wa salli lahum ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbi wa sallam. I'm going to make a very short dua. Insha Allah. Allahumma laka alhamdu kama yambagi li jalali wajhika wa azim sultanik. اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد في الأولين وصل على سيدنا محمد في الآخرين وصل على سيدنا محمد في الملأ الأعلى إلى يوم الدين اللهم اجعل جمعنا هذا جمعا مرحوما واجعل تفرقنا من بعده تفرقا معصوما ولا تجعل فينا ولا بيننا ولا حولنا شقيا ولا محروما اللهم نسألك الجنة وما قرب إليها من قول وعمل اللهم نسألك الفردوس الأعلى من الجنة اللهم نسألك مرافقة نبيك صلى الله عليه وسلم في الجنة 
اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا كلها دقها وجلها خطأها وعمدها علانيتها وسرها اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين اللهم ارحم أمواتنا أجمعين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وإسرافنا في أمرنا وثبت أقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين واجعلنا للمتقين إماما وصل اللهم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وجزاكم الله خيرا for joining the, this lecture inshallah and inshallah next uh, Tuesday we'll have the last lecture inshallah on Surat Al-Ikhlas inshallah